the Adelaide Hills, on Kangaroo Island, on the north coast of New South Wales, in the Gippsland region. The ABC is what we rely upon during critical emergency events as a nation, and we should value it. Ida Buttrose has called out this, and we know now that indeed David Anderson, the CEO of uh, the ABC, wrote to the government asking for the cuts to be reversed, not once but twice, saying that if they were reversed, the ABC could put in extra services for regional Australia. And that was rejected by Scott Morrison and this government who just don't get it. We know during the bushfires, Christy McBain was on the ground each and every day. We know that this government frankly went missing and it's been missing ever since in failing to clean up the debris, in failing to give support to businesses and individuals who are impacted by these bushfires. This Saturday is a chance to send a message to this government, send a message that the performance hasn't been good enough on these issues, send a message that ABC cuts should be reversed and that funding should be restored, and they can do that by voting number one for Christy McBain, someone who will stand up for this community. Happy to take questions. This is your first national planning commitment since becoming Labor leader more than a year ago. Why has it taken so long to revise your priorities? Uh, the fact is, we were hoping that the government would reverse these cuts, but it hasn't happened and we now see the job losses that are there. Uh, we've made uh, a, a number of uh, commitments through vision statements about the general direction that Labor will be taking under a, a government that I lead. And we'll continue to do so. Uh, just uh, last week, we outlined an energy policy and uh, we offered, in good faith, uh, to sit down with the government and devise a framework for energy in this country, something that the Business Council of Australia, Australian Industry Group and others have been crying out for, and Scott Morrison hasn't even bothered to respond. Albert, do you think it's appropriate for states like Queensland to keep their borders shut to Victoria? I think it's appropriate that state governments take advice from their state medical officers. Uh, that's what's seeing us through this. This should not be the subject of political argy-bargy. Uh, this is, whether it be Stephen Marshall's government in South Australia, the Liberal government in Tasmania, the Labor government in WA, or the Labor government in, uh, in Queensland, and I note here in New South Wales, Gladys Berejiklian is, is saying to Victorians they're not welcome here, and New South Wales visitors shouldn't go to Victoria. So what I think is appropriate is that this not be uh, two messages. Uh, which is what, for a while, we've got from this government, including from the state government of Gladys Berejiklian, who was critical of Queensland, is now saying exactly the same message uh, with regard to Victoria. I think that this needs to be based upon medical and health advice, uh, not based upon politics. Does Daniel Andrews need to take responsibility for the failed hotel quarantine program that's part of Parkes? Oh, look, Daniel Andrews has led Victoria very strongly through this crisis. Uh, he continues to do so, and I think that uh, state and territory governments uh, have, uh, have followed uh, the advice that's been given. Anastasia Palaszczuk had a pretty um, political criticism of the PM yesterday. Do you share that? She said that national leadership was black. Well, look, I, I'm, I don't believe that it's appropriate and I haven't sought to uh, politicise the response uh, to uh, the uh, medical issues with regard to borders. I'm not surprised that Anastasia Palaszczuk, who has shown tremendous leadership in Queensland, is frustrated at uh, the uh, comments of the Prime Minister, given he has said time and time again, it's up to the states what happens after every one of these national cabinet meetings, and then he goes on to criticise the actions only of the Queensland Labor government, not the WA Labor government,
not the South Australian Liberal government, not the Tasmanian Liberal government, not the Victorian Labor government, not the New South Wales Liberal government, but just Queensland. Could be there's an election coming up at the end of the year. How much pressure do you think your leadership will come under if you're not successful on Saturday? This is about the people of Eden Monero. What about your leadership? This, this is about the people of Eden Monero. And uh, I was elected leader of the Labor Party uh, unopposed. Uh, a bit unlike Scott Morrison, uh, who, uh, when he stood, of course, uh, came through the track, pretended he was supporting Malcolm Turnbull, wasn't really supporting Malcolm Turnbull, had all his supporters vote for Peter Dutton in the first ballot, and then came up uh, the outside on the, uh, on the second ballot. So I've always been up front. Uh, I have the support of, of my party, and uh, Scott Morrison of course, was uh, only successful because people who really wanted Julie Bishop to be Prime Minister uh, prioritised stopping Peter Dutton. So, so your, your, leadership your, safest safe. yeah. your leadership is safe on Saturday? This is about the Eden Monero by-election. This is about Christy McBain. She's the best candidate. She's standing up for the people of Eden Monero. See if you can find... You're welcome to ask any questions you like to Christy here today. See if you can find the Liberal candidate who's in witness protection during this by-election.